Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Cars with Big Butrev. I am Big Butrev and today we have an amazing show including something that we did in India, the tour of the Mahindra Factory plus the review of the XUV 300 that's coming soon to Kenya. But first things first, let's check out the news. So on to our first news item and CBBT was lucky to be invited for the 2020 Land Rover Discovery Sport launch that was held in Cape Town, South Africa. And I can tell you for a fact, so much has changed. So what's new? Let's start with the engines. Now Land Rover replaced the previous generation engines with the in-house, in-design engineering engines. On launch, you only had the 2-litre turbo diesel engine, which produces 102 kilowatts or 180 horsepower. That's why it's called the D180 series and torque of 430 newton meters of torque. And that is a lot because all that power is sent to the four pores courtesy of an all-wheel drive system matched with the Terrain Response 2 system. Now, Terrain Response 2 is the advancement of the Terrain Response that you've seen on the Land Rover and the Range Rover family, and now it has an auto mode. Now, this auto mode uses 12 sensors to literally calibrate and see whatever the road is ahead and adjust the suspension, the steering, the throttle response, giving you a peace of mind when you're driving off-road. Now, it's going to come to Kenya Q2 of 2020, that's from April onwards, and of course you do expect Inchcape Kenya to have this car on the floor with a good starting price of about 9 million Kenya shillings. Stay tuned, we're going to give you more updates on the review of this particular car next week. On to our second news item, and we go all the way to Ford, the blue oval. Now, pictures have just surfaced of the 2020 Ford Bronco. Now, this Bronco is a legendary name that's been there for years and years, close to 50 years, and now it's ready for 2021 and 2022 going forward. Who are the key rivals? Well, obviously, the Land Rover Defender being one of them and the Jimny Wrangler. So there's all this retro styling coming about. Now, in terms of power, it's going to have the brand new 2 litre bi turbo diesel engine that's found also on the Ranger. And it's going to produce 157 kilowatts and 500 newton meters of shock. Enough to accelerate from 0 to 100 in sub 6 seconds. That's pretty fast for a diesel vehicle. And obviously, with the whole retro look, there's even one called the Bronco Sport, which is directly aiming at the Land Rover Discovery 110 series, which is brand new as well. So we can't wait to review this car. I'm going to give you the first review, courtesy of Cars with Big Boy Trev, coming soon to a TV screen near you. Now, on to our last news item when we go all the way to Seoul, South Korea, where Hyundai have actually introduced the Elantra N. Now, remember the N series is the brand's motorsports arm and are actually flying high in the WRC. So this Elantra N will actually share the same engine as the Hyundai i30N, which is the one of the most hottest hatchbacks on sale right now. 202 kilowatts sent to the front pause. That's going to be so much power. It's going to accelerate from 0 to 100 in under 5 seconds and of course top speed of 250 kilometers an hour. And we can all give this credit to Mr. Bimmerman who's been in charge of this particular brand. Remember he was the head of the BMW Motorsports M division for so many years which brought you the M3, the M5s and now the N brand has now rejuvenated Hyundai and are making now exciting cars. We can't wait. Kaitano Kenya, please, if you don't mind, please bring this car to Kenya and we'll be the first to review this car. Courtesy of cars will be by travel. Welcome to CBBT feedback section where we give you all the feedback that you gave us concerning last week's show. So we're going to jump in straight to Facebook and we go to a guy called Kennedy Sitati Tembula. He says, quote, glory is here. Well, as you know, last week we reviewed the Glory 580 and I can tell you it has impressed so many people. Another person who was quite interested about the Glory 580 was another gentleman and he says, uh, Mr. Clarence Culture Nando, he says the car is similar to a Lexus and the back is similar to that of a CRV. Well, I can tell you the Chinese have tried to mash up the best of both worlds and obviously give you a good product. So we're going to have many more of these interesting designs and products on CBBT, so stay tuned. And obviously, one last person is a guy called Jonathan Irungi. He says, the show is fantastic, although I was late. Guy, if you miss CBBT, please follow us on YouTube and other social media handles. It appears on YouTube 7 a.m. next day, and you're able to see the previous episode of CBBT. Thanks, guys. We kindly appreciate the fact that you love watching CBBT. If you have any questions, comments, or queries, don't hesitate to write to us as seen on the social media handles below. We'll get back to you next week.
So guys, this is the Mahindra XUV300 and it's a mini crossover slash MPV. In terms of power, what does it have? So up front you do have a choice of either petrol or diesel engine, but this particular one is a diesel derivative 1.5 litre uh, turbo diesel that produces 86 kilowatts and 300 newton meters of torque. Uh, paired to a six-speed AMT automated manual transmission, which allows this car to accelerate like this. So you can feel the pull of the 300 newton meters sent to the four wheels, and of course you do have the ability to drive this car so comfortably. Now, obviously, you do have uh, suspension, which is the McPherson strut at the front, and you have an independent uh, link, multi-link suspension at the back, just to keep you steady on the road. And obviously, you do have safety equipment in this particular vehicle, which includes ABS and airbags as standard. Now, creature comforts, as you can see, big boy is comfortable. It sits five people comfortably. Enough leg and headroom for your average family, your young modern family. And obviously, your creature comfort, like a multi-touch information display that houses a climate control, Bluetooth connectivity, USB and Bluetooth functionality that you can pair your phone and you can control so much. The instrument binnacle is uh, aligned with an orange hue which has clear uh, italics just to ensure that you have all the correct information that you need when driving and not taking your eyes off the road. Um, as you can see on the left hand side you have a tachometer and the right hand side you have a speedometer and in the middle you have a multi information display which is monochrome that gives you uh, critical information like your average speed, uh, driving time and obviously you do have your fuel and temperature level which is very very important. This being a crossover, very popular, practically the name of the game, you have multiple uh, you know, cubby holes and spaces on the door handles are big enough and obviously you do have the center console as well, you do have a uh, big big uh, you know, section where you can put your, your cell phone, you can put hide your you know small trinkets and things like that. That's it. Um, at the back, you have plenty of space. Rear passengers can sit comfortably, three, three of them, and then you do have uh, safety people like your, your safety belts, which are all standard across the range. At the back, you have enough luggage space um, to carry your shopping, your groceries. Uh, even if you're doing long distance, you're going to travel long distance, this particular car is quite comfortable. And remember, this particular engine is very economical and it's a diesel. So you have good pull like this, and it's refined, and the quality is fantastic. Now, in Kenya, this particular car will play with the likes of the Ford EcoSport, and of course, the one and only Suzuki Vitara, which is also in this particular market, and it's fighting along with this particular car. For sure, I can tell you for a fact, the fit, build, the finishing, and the quality is amazing. Question is, are you ready for Mahindra Rise? Stay tuned, we're going to do another review of another Mahindra vehicle. And we are at Pune, India. Mahindra test truck facility, something the different variations of Mahindra products. And I can tell you, this company is not joking. It is the future of motoring. Here are the top five grey imports set to land on our shores this year. As 2020 is here, there are a few vehicles of interest that we think you should consider for your next purchase. Below are some of the top five picks for 2020. BMW X1. This stylish crossover is in its second generation. It offers plenty of practicality, technology and performance. Based on the One Series platform, the X1 has a taller ride and stance. It is powered by a 1.5 litre three cylinder turbo engine that produces 110 kilowatts and 200 newton meters of torque, paired to an HP automatic and is sent to the front wheels. Inside the cabin is well laid out and has all the features found on the One Series. Prices start at Kenya shillings 2.5 million. Toyota CHR. This is Toyota's first crossover vehicle introduced a few years back. It's designed to target the younger generation and is based on Toyota's modular TNGA platform. The CHR is also powered by a 1-litre turbo petrol or a 1.5-litre turbo diesel engine that only powers the front wheels. Inside, it has plenty of technology including multimedia information display that supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and prices start from Kenya shillings 3 million. Nissan Leaf. This has been voted the world's best-selling electric car with over 750,000 cars being sold last year. The Leaf is based on the Renault Nissan CMF modular platform and has a 90 kilowatt battery. It can cover a range of up to 400 kilometers depending on driving style. 
It takes roughly about 30 minutes to charge it from 0 to 70% via a fast charge facility and a 7 hour on regular power supply. Additionally, it comes with regenerative braking technology that feeds harvested brake energy back to the battery for greater range. Prices start from Kenya shillings 2 million. Toyota Crown Toyota unveiled the current generation Crown luxury saloon for the Japanese domestic market. Based on the Lexus GS platform, it comes with a choice of two engine options, either a 180kW 2.5-litre V6 or a 220kW 3.5-litre V6 mated to a 10-speed CVT automatic and an 8-speed for the 2.5 variant. Additionally, it comes with a pre sense safety package that prepares the vehicle for crash while trying to eliminate injury in the process. Prices start from Kenya Shillings 2.5 million. Number 1. Jaguar XE If you're looking for an executive, sporty, yet compact saloon car, then look no further. The XE from Jaguar is said to take the grey import by storm, the BMW 3 Series is said to be its key rival, and the chassis and handling has been worked to deliver unbelievable ride quality. The front double wishbone and the rear integral link work in tandem to deliver a smooth ride and balance. It is powered by either a 2-liter Ingenium engine which produces 177 kilowatts and 314 Nm of torque when paired to an 8-speed automatic. If you love power then you can opt for the 250 kilowatt 3-liter V6 supercharged and prices start from Kenya shillings 3 million. In summary, if you're shopping around for a new car, you may want to consider any of the above cars. Mahendra is a very large Indian conglomerate. It's about 21 billion US dollars at last count, with uh, about more than 50% of our revenues coming from outside of India. You know, in the last 70 years, from being an Indian company, we've now evolved to being a true multinational. We're present in about 100 countries in the world and in businesses which are very diverse automobiles, farm equipment, financing, aerospace, leisure. Lots of very diverse businesses, but there's one thing that actually keeps us all together. It's our philosophy, really, and it's all encapsulated in one word, and that word is rise. Um, and what does rise mean to all of us? It means the same thing, is that how can each one of us, despite the industry that we, we're in, how can we give back to our communities, our customers, our partners, our employees, so that all of us rise and improve our lot in life. So that is, it's on our business cards, it's on everything that we, we do or write, it's Mahendra Rise. And the next phase actually in our journey in Kenya is to start assembling locally. We believe that you have to assemble locally to get a lower cost structure, to help us tailor the product more to the local consumer. And that's our next step. So we're gonna start locally assembling in Mombasa. Uh, our Scorpio pickup. And with that, I believe, I strongly believe that we will have a much, much bigger play in Kenya and Mahindra will become a household brand. So right now we've just seen the, the vehicle has come from the welding section. Uh, it's been painted and dipped in anodized to ensure that rust is prevented. Now, right here, they're about to assemble the fuel tank of this particular car. And then once they do that, because they're trying to sort out everything that's underbody, we're going to move to the suspension and cross members of the vehicle just to ensure that the vehicle has a steady suspension system, both front and rear. So come, follow me. So as you can see here, he's actually trying to assemble the front sub-member of the suspension. So you can see your, you know, your lower bushes and links all the way up. They're going to be fitted up into the suspension, into the chamber, and of course, be able to be tested for rigidity, which is so important when they're filming this particular car. After they've just fitted the assembly of the suspension cross members and the fuel tank, it's time to put the engine underneath. Remember, they're trying to sort out everything underneath first before getting into the cabin. So as you can see here, that is the engine line that's been assembled. So the system here is the T-junction. The engine line comes to the end and then they meet with the body. Then they're able to fix the engine into the body to ensure that it fits well and 
meets the just-in-time quality that is a global standard when it comes to vehicle assembly. That's quite key because now it makes this particular facility very efficient and I can tell you this particular way of doing things is going to translate into Kenya at the assembly of the Scorpio pickup. At this station is where they're putting in the seats and the steering wheel. Now, just like Trevor mentioned, they're doing a just-in-time production system. What this means is that on the line itself, there's actually no storage because there are packs or kits that travel with each of these vehicles while it's going on the line and all of them have been coded specifically for that vehicle itself. Now, the doors that are missing are actually on a separate line called the door line where they are also getting fitted for the interior over there now, of course, the windows, the electricals and everything. And then going forward, the doors are going to be connected to the car just before it goes into the finishing line. So one of the things about this factory and the technology that they're employing is that they're using very heavily robots. And you can see over here, some of the parts in these beams that are being going to each and every vehicle are actually taken around the factory by an automated robot. So the use of technology in this place is very, very serious. On my left, as you can see here, we have a robotic arm that actually glues the windscreen and the rear windscreen together, putting glue at a very precise condition so that by the end of it all, you'll be able to stick it onto the vehicle and make sure that it has a precise amount of glue for it. It's so robotic, it's amazing because it actually measures every single part of the edge of the windscreen and ensures that the glue is applied at the right amount so that you know smudges at the end of the pillar. So that is amazing. I mean, that level of automation courtesy of Mahindra. So right now, as you can see behind me, we've just finished the cabin trim, so they're putting on the door panel so that uh, it finally goes for the testing phase of this particular, the KU100. Once alignment is done, there is a dynamic roll test which checks uh, how fast the vehicle can go and able to check the different settings of ABS if it's working, if the brakes are working to ensure that you have a safe car on the road. And that is so important because right now we're in an era where safety is critical. So this KUV100 has been put to test and you're just going to see this particular one being sorted. After the alignment, we're going to go on to the rolling dyno to ensure that all the suspension parts are working if it can reach the speed in ABS and braking test can work. And then after that, we're going to go to uh, the shower test where we check all the seals uh, for the vehicle. It's going to be put on an intense amount of shower so that to ensure that there's no water that comes in to the cabin. So guys, it's a beautiful day. We are driving this particular car, the KUV100, where this is a crossover vehicle, mini crossover vehicle, and it fights the likes of the Renault Quid, which is the main competitor in this particular segment. Now, power is uh, derived from a 1.2 liter engine petrol that produces 61 kilowatts and 115 newton meters of torque sent to the front pose courtesy of a five-speed manual transmission. It is very easy. It's synchromation. You're able to you know, switch these uh, gears very easily. Now, obviously, when it comes to uh, stability, power, and control, it's very important. Up front, you have McPherson struts, and at the back, you have a training link suspension, which keeps this car planted on different surfaces. Safety-wise, you do have anti-lock braking system for your active features, and obviously, you do have ESP, which is standard across the range. Now, everyone is making ESP a standard, so that you and your family remain safe from harm's way. In case all hell breaks loose, then you can rely on the multiple airbags on this particular vehicle. You have a sturdy crumple zone, and obviously you do have a safety cell that dissipates impact energy towards, from away from the passenger cells. That's it. Let's talk about the interior of this particular car. The dashboard has been designed to face away from the driver to give an illusion of space and comfort. You do have uh, interesting texture finish. It looks like carbon fiber uh, finish, the look of it. And obviously you do have a piano black finish 
right at the middle of the center console. You do have a console that has a multi-touch display that houses a camera control, radio, and you're able to connect to Bluetooth, your phone obviously, uh, stream something from USB port, and obviously listen to radio. And the system is not too bad, it's not too shabby. Obviously you do talk about space, it's a practical car, it sits five people comfortably, a lot of headroom which is important, I've noticed Mahinda cars have a lot of uh, headroom, legroom is fantastic, big boy as you can see, is very comfortable, the seats are supportive, and you can drive this car on a day-to-day -day long distance. And obviously on the instrument being called clear and precise, the Maruti way, you're able to see all the critical elements and the dials light up in a bright crimson hue. There is satellite buttons to control obviously the navigation system on the telephone and obviously you do have enough luggage space to carry your veggies, your shopping, your luggage from the market or if you're traveling uh, for a short uh, vacay, this particular car is the one for you. Ladies, I'm speaking to you. So comfortable, so practical, plenty of cubbyholes and spaces. You do have mirrors on the sun visors as well. And obviously you do have good seating and viewing angles. It's, it's nippy enough, you can traverse into parking, you know, you know, fit into tight spaces. And the steering is so light, uh, you're able to control this car very, very easily. Mahindra have actually raised the bar. I'm telling you, I'm in India and I've seen the level of quality, the workmanship, the craftsmanship. I can tell you, it is at par with any other uh, OEM, Ford, you know, Toyota, they are up there even maybe surpassing them. I've noticed noise, vibration and harshness in all the cars that I've tested today. It's very, very good. Standing out, this is Big Boy Trev, live and direct from Pune in India, something the Mahindra, the UV100.